when it comes to our brain, how important is creatine and the form that we take it in? So, so we all need creatine. Um, and, I, and I don't mean it as a supplement. I just mean it as a molecule in our bodies. It is ubiquitous mm -hmm. throughout all of our cells. And it's used as an energy buffer uh, in, in particular. Mm -hmm. So like a short-term energy buffer. It has some mm -hmm. other um, functions as well. But it's so important that it's, it's one of... Um, the the molecules that is most dependent on methylation people will have no doubt heard of methylation and actually uh, a significant chunk of your methylation currency is spent on producing creatine because it's such a critical molecule so we, we make it ourselves and we make it from uh, uh, amino acids and people can get um, a good amount obviously from their own production but there is quite a lot of evidence to support that uh, supplementation can be beneficial as well Mm -hmm. If you eat a large amount of meat uh, and fish, particularly salmon, then maybe you don't need to supplement. And you know, I, I don't. Even though it is my favorite supplement, and I I recommend it very freely, I don't. I, I'm not going to say that everybody has to take it. Um, mm -hmm. The it, it has a long history in bodybuilding and and athletics. Mm. Um, it's yeah. it's very it's very safe. Uh, and it is ergogenic. It Im improves power production and strength. Um, and so that means you can push yourself a little bit harder, get a few more reps in the gym. It helps uh, build muscle and strength uh, in that way. Um, but it also has similar functions um, in the brain. And rather than being a, a strength athlete, not everybody has to be a strength athlete, although I think we all are in some way if we if we move our bodies. Mm. Um, but you probably want to be a cognitive athlete of some kind. You want your, your brain to perform well um, when you want it to perform well. And creatine helps in a few scenarios. So there's evidence that those who consume more creatine from the diet have a lower risk of mental health disorders, particularly depression. Um, and there are two or three randomized oh, wow. controlled trials where they added creatine to um, uh, an antidepressant medication in those who didn't respond fully to the antidepressant medication. And they saw improvements in depression scores in those who took uh, creatine. So it seems to help with mood um, in a range of individuals um, from athletes through to uh, elderly uh, individuals. And it has a greater effect in those who, who are older. But if uh, you take take creatine, it seems to support general cognitive function. So um, that's been shown in several studies. And the the like I said, the benefit is greater in those who are older, but younger people and athletes do seem to benefit as well. And then the final um, the, the final group, and this is probably relevant to lots of people, is that uh, creatine <laughs> taken as a single dose and a relatively high dose, but taken as a single dose. Um, after sleep deprivation seems to uh, improve uh, or at least allow you to maintain cognitive uh, cognitive function. And that's been shown again in athletes um, and in, in the general population. So um, there are a range of ways that creatine seems to benefit uh, both mood and uh, cognitive function more broadly. Um, the, the form Can of I creatine- Can I ask one question yes, there? Yes, absolutely. Because you mentioned that, so I'm just thinking, you know, I have had, I, I'm aware of the importance of creatine, you know, for our brains, but not to the extent that having a bad night's sleep, having a high dose of creatine can help improve cognitive function. Mm. So that will definitely perk up a lot of people just listening to this. I mean, lots of us can be sleep deprived, we might be new mums. I mean, there's kind of a whole plethora, we might be working ourselves, you know, into a very like heavy cognitive load that we're not sleeping very well. So would that be just on? A supplement or could you have you know a high amount of kind of creatine foods the next day such as you said like fish and meat and would that have the same effect or is it just simply taking a high dose supplement what's kind of the what would you advise there for the next day if that's kind of what the research is showing yeah it, there's probably a little bit of both um so mm. when they've done the sleep deprivation studies there was a um a well-known study that's a few years old now where they did this in in rugby players and they had them be sleep deprived or not and they showed that creatine uh, was as good as caffeine at maintaining complex motor skills uh, after after wow. sleep deprivation. And some people might like that because you know maybe caffeine makes them jittery. Uh, and there are there are some nice uh, data on how caffeine and other stimulants can make us feel better, 
and they can make us think that we're performing better, but actually, but we're performing worse. So um, and maybe we'll talk about that as well. But but creatine is, is yes. maybe a, a nice option there. Uh, and then there's a much more recent study that came out just just a few months ago uh, that showed something similar, and it's improving energetics in the brain, as we might expect, after a night of sleep deprivation. And they took uh, 0.35 grams per kilo. So for a uh, 70 kilo individual, this would be about 20 grams, which is like a, a loading dose of, of creatine for anybody who's familiar with the dosing. But it's just like four scoops of a, of a, of a creatine powder. That's not astronomical amounts of, of creatine. And, and creatine in those doses have been studied long term in people very safe uh it's been studied in the elderly it's been studied in in postmenopausal women um so these doses are not abnormal um but if you are taking a regular creatine supplement you might take five to ten grams a day so it's just a little bit you know two, maybe two to four times uh, a, a regular sort of uh, long-term creatine supplement dose you can get those kinds of doses from food but I mean, we're, we're probably talking like several kilos of beef and fish a day to, to achieve it. So, so not impossible, but probably quite, but probably quite difficult. Um, there are some, yeah. there are some animal, there are some animal studies that suggest that if you take creatine long term, actually, you seem to maintain cognitive function, odd, but whilst requiring slightly less sleep. So this might then say, if you were taking uh, long term, uh, sort of supplemental doses of creatine, um, it, during periods of maybe less than ideal sleep, creatine can can perhaps help you maintain cognitive function longer term as well. But that, that's mainly based on on animal studies, so so less less good. Whereas the acute stuff after like a single night of sleep deprivation in humans uh, seems to be pretty reproducible. And do we know why? Do you know why it kind of it can work in the same in the same way as, as caffeine can work with with brain functioning? Is there an understanding with the mechanism of how that's happening? Um. Yeah, yes and no. Um, one of the one of the ways that it seems to be having it is is providing this short term um, en- energy buffer. Uh, and mm-hmm. when you're when you're sleep deprived, you know maybe there's there's a slight you, you end up with different areas of the brain, yeah, essentially not functioning at their their optimal at their optimal level because you know there's still uh, a number of things sort of suppressing uh, metabolic function like adenosine, um, and then maybe creatine by improving the the sort of energy status can help overcome some of that some some people find that uh, creatine is slightly stimulating um like directly itself um so it's potentially having some other effects we know it affects mitochondrial calcium handling which is really important for energy production and overall sort of cellular health so it has these other functions and i'll i'll say that we think we know some of what creatine does um but people have argued equally that in uh, contexts like uh, mental health, the the energy uh, sort of the energy substrate uh, idea of creatine isn't enough to really explain what it seems to be doing. So it's possible that it's doing some stuff that we just don't understand yet. I mentioned there when we started, and I know I love that you also said, which I'm very passionate about. You know, it's not just about supplementation, or everybody needs supplementation, but actually, you know, from the food sources, it's looking at meat and fish and animal products as um, having these rich doses. But if we are thinking about supplementation, and I say this because many people have become plant based eaters or just don't like fish. Um, mm. What should they be looking for? Because I did say creatine monohydrate, and I think many people might not be aware of that term um, and that type of creatine supplement because there's loads on the market. So, you know, having one that that we both have spoken about, I think is really important. Can you explain why that one is is so important to choose when it comes to this? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, it's nice because creatine monohydrate is the uh, the one that's the best researched. In fact, it's the only creatine that's really been extensively researched. And all of the studies that I would ever mention about creatine use creatine monohydrate. It's also the cheapest and the easiest to get, which is nice. Um, right. And <laughs> it's it's very inexpensive. Uh, the majority of it is actually produced under the name CreaPure. Uh, it's made in Germany. And then if you buy like a sports supplement that has creatine monohydrate as either, you know, like a powder with sco- with like a little scoop or as pills, it's just white labeled, but all produced by by the same company. Um, I would recommend that people look for a product that contains creopure because we know that it's high quality. There are other places making creatine monohydrate, but then you're, you don't really know necessarily what, what's in there. Um, so 
Crea Pure, creatine monohydrate. But again, that's what most reputable sports supplement companies, and that's you usually buy it from a sports supplement company. That's what they tend to use. So uh, you can and you can see it on the back of the packet. Um, and you get the, get this in Holland Barrett. They probably have it in Boots. Um, you can order it off Amazon, right? The, the, and it's, it's it's pretty cheap, easy to get. Um, all other forms of creatine, and there are lots where they try and pH balance it, or you know, I've even seen some mm. uh, uh, lipos- liposomal forms and some of the other fancy things. <sighs> Don't bother with any of that. Just get the ignore. basic stuff. I- ignore. Mm-hmm. Not worth your time. Not worth your money. Um, they're not studied. They haven't been shown to to be to be better, or at least as good uh, as as you know the good old uh, creatine monohydrate, which has been used for decades at this point. Thank you so much for listening to the show. The link to the full episode is in the description.